In this video, we're going to talk about the master budget. And the master budget, it's important to note, is not actually one budget. It's not like one really large budget for, for the entire firm. It's actually a series of interrelated budgets. So it's a series of budgets. And these budgets are going to detail basically the sales, production, and financial goals for the firm. A series of budgets that deal with the firm's goals and how the firm is going to get there. And then ultimately when we're thinking about the output, uh, when we have this, this master budgeting process, uh, what we're looking to come up with is a cash budget, which is going to be really important uh, in terms of determining whether we have enough money uh, to make it through the different quarters uh, during the year. Maybe we're a seasonal business and we do more, most of our, uh, our business, our sales in the fourth quarter for, for retail ho holiday shopping. And we said we want to make sure we have enough cash in the beginning. And so we do this cash budget. And then also we're going to have a budgeted income statement and a budgeted balance sheet. Those are going to be basically the final, final output uh, of this master budgeting process. So when we think about putting together this master budget, this series of interrelated budgets, it's all going to start with coming up with a sales budget. So when we think about our sales budget, that's really the most important, or I should say foundational, most foundational budget that we're going to be making because without the sales budget, we're not going to be able to make a lot of the other budgets. For example, our, our next budget is going to be the production budget. Now, if you just think about the production budget for a moment, we're going to need to know how many units we're going to have to produce, right? We have to say, okay, how many units, units to produce, but how can we know that if we don't know the sales budget of how many budgets we, or how many uh, units we expect to sell? So if we say, okay, well, we're going to sell 10,000 units, that gives us an idea of, of how, many, how many units we're going to need to produce. Now, you might say, okay, well, where do we come up with, with the sales budget? How do we put this together? Well, the first thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to have to talk to the marketing department. Let's put MKT. So we're going to need a marketing forecast of sales right now that that's really not an accounting function that's really not it's a little beyond what we're talking about in this video but you go to the marketing people you get a forecast and you say okay here's the number of units we expect to sell in quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four and then here's the prices that we're going to receive so then you say okay well a hundred units times five dollars a unit okay we're expecting you know, sales of of five hundred dollars so in any event when you come up with a sales budget uh, based on this marketing forecast, that's going to allow you uh, to put together uh, these other budgets, uh, particularly the, the production budget. And also, there, there's another budget, which I which I actually didn't uh, write in here because I wanted to make it a little bit easier. I didn't want to have way too many, too many lines and so forth. But there's going to be another budget that we need the sales budget to make, and that is called the SG&A budget. And let me, let me put it, I've already written over here, and I apologize, this is... This is going to look terrible, but I, I just didn't want to overwhelm you with information, but we're also going to have the Selling General and Administrative Expense Budget, and that is going to be based off of the sales budget. And you might be thinking, why? Right? SG&A, we've got a lot of things like the CEO's salary in SG&A. Is that real? Do we need to know the sales budget to, to compute that? Well, remember, the SG&A also has selling expense that's what the s stands for and a lot of that will be based on the number of units for example the sales commissions that we pay to our salespeople uh, will be based on the number of units sold or, or things like that so basically this sales budget is not going to only allow us to do the production budget but also to do the the sgna budget uh, now the sgna budget is off here on the side so let's let's not think about that for a moment uh, now let's think about this production budget so when we think about this production budget we don't need to just know, okay, how many units are we going to sell during the period. We also need to know, okay, well, what do we want to have in our ending inventory, right? We're going to think we're, we're going to have an ending inventory, and so that's an important thing to think about because we don't just need the 500 units we're going to sell. Maybe we need an extra 200 for, like, a buffer supply of inventory. And so we'll say, well, actually, we'll have this, this other budget, an ending inventory budget. And again, I, I didn't write that in there because w when I kind of zoom out and show you all the budgets, I, I didn't want you to be too freaked out but and see all these budgets. But uh, let's just follow this, this, this progression right here up to down. And the, these are kind of on the side, this ending inventory budget and the SG&A. Let's leave those aside for a second. Now let's focus back on we got our sales budget, 
that allows us to put together the production budget, how many units we need to produce, right? But now that we've, we say how many units we need to produce, we need to think about direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, right? Now that's just assuming here, we're talking about a manufacturing firm. If we're not talking about a manufacturing firm, then we actually have to put together a merchandise uh, uh, purchases budget, right? Because, and that's just kind of in lieu of the production budget, direct materials, and all that. We just have a merchandise purchases budget. Like if we're Walmart and we're just buying, uh, we're a retailer, we're buying things and then reselling them, we're not going to have any direct materials, direct labor, overhead, uh, those types of things incurred in producing any units. So we're not going to have a production budget. We just have that merchandise purchases budget in lieu of all these things right here. So, but let's just stick with the more complicated example, the manufacturer. We say how many units we need to produce. Now we can use that to say how, many, how much do we need in terms of direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. We can't say how many direct materials we need until we know how many units we need to produce and what, what we want for ending inventory and so forth. Right, And then we don't know how many units we need to produce until we know how many units we're going to sell. So that's what we talk about when we say this master budgetary process where all these budgets are, are interrelated. So let's stay with this up-down progression here. Now that we know our direct materials, direct labor, and, and manufacturing overhead, when you think about those budgets, now we can go and put together this cash budget. And again, I said the cash budget is very important. Because you need to make sure that during the year you're not going to run out of cash, right? You don't want a thing where, oh, well, we do a lot of our business in the summer because we sell ice cream, and then, oh, now it's 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 the it's the winter time and we ran out of cash because we didn't do a good job budgeting. So for each quarter, we're we're going to have this cash budget that goes through each quarter. What our cash needs are, what our expected cash receipts are. Do we have to do any borrowing to meet our cash needs for, let's say, the first quarter? So the cash budget. Uh, of course, we need to know all these other things, kind of the direct materials and, and all these different things, before we can think about the cash budget. And then we can also think of things like now, if we remember back here with our, our SG&A, that's also going to inform our cash budget as well. So we can just write down a little line. So there are actually a lot of things that are going to come back to this cash budget as well as the sales. All right, so let me just draw a little line here. So I don't want to, I don't want to draw too many lines, and this, this is already looking pretty ugly. But the, but the main idea is we've got this flow from top down, right? So we we got to start with our sales forecast, figure out the sales, then we know how many units we need to produce, and then we're going to start thinking about the materials and, and labor to produce those units. And ultimately, all this is going to come back. All these different things are going to inform what our cash budget is, our cash receipts, our, our cash disbursement, what our cash needs are as we as we progress through the year. Now, we talked about so we've we've got all our budgets. Here, right but we also going to have we're going to ultimately put together a budgeted income statement and a budgeted balance sheet right so these aren't based on real numbers these are based on what we think our income statement is going to look like what we think our balance sheet is going to look like and these are just going to come down here and unfortunately you won't be able to see the entire screen and so we got our budgeted income statement uh, what, what, and and not only do uh, we use this this cash budget obviously to put together the budgeted income statement but if we we drew a long line back, and I'm, I'm not going to scroll up, but back to our sales budget. Our sales budget is also going to obviously be involved in, in coming up with our budgeted income statement. And then once we have a budgeted income statement, we can go ahead and, and use that uh, to put together uh, the budgeted balance sheet. And there, there are probably some relationships that, that I accidentally uh, forgot about mentioning here. For example, that SG&A, you remember, was way up here. That SGNA obviously is also that, that budget of SGNA is also going to be used uh, to make our budgeted income statement. We think about what is, what do we expect our SGNA expense to be, uh, and then ultimately the budgeted balance sheet we're also going to be using. Uh, so this this cash budget will be involved, and and then the income statement as well, knowing what we expect our net income to be. So you see that all these relationships are interrelated, right? We can't just come out and put together a balance sheet without first doing a cash budget. And an income statement, right? So we, we really, uh, we, these are really interrelated in a number of ways. And you see how important now it is that we get a good sales forecast and do a good sales budget. Because if you have one mistake up here, that's really going to flow through the entire system. And we're going to end up uh, with perhaps way too many direct materials, raw materials on hand, or we hired too much labor, 
or we got too many units or we got all these different things so really one mistake in the system can can affect it a lot because there are so many different things so if you think about a manager who says oh you know what I think I'm gonna underestimate what my sales are going to be because I want to over I, I want to make sure I meet my sales target so if I if I over promise and say oh I can meet I think I can meet you know 500 units in sales but I, I just I, I really want to say 400 to my boss I'm gonna make 400 because I'd rather my boss be pleasantly surprised when I have 500 than to promise 500 and not get there right so you say okay I, I want to I know I could do this, this true estimate is what I think I can do is 500 but I'm gonna say I want to 400 I'm gonna put a little slack they call that a budgetary site. You say, I'm going to put in a little, I, I, I'm going to, I can sell 400. So they say, okay, let's put 400 in the sales budget. But then in reality, you end up selling 500, which you knew, but you had just put this slack because you wanted to protect yourself or this manager wanted to protect him or herself. And then, so now we say, okay, well, we budgeted based on 400 units, not 500. So now our production budget was set to that 400 units. And now we need 100 extra, and so now we, we don't have the direct materials we need. We don't have the labor. We don't have all these different things. And so it can just create a lot of problems because of these interrelationships. And so budgeting is, is very important process.